Have you ever wondered if we could control the weather? A tantalizing question, isn't it? Imagine harnessing the power of the elements, bringing rain to parched lands or sunshine to a gloomy day. This concept of weather manipulation is not as far-fetched as it sounds. Enter the world of cloud seeding, a scientific method that's been around since the mid-20th century. It's a technique that attempts to alter weather patterns, specifically to increase precipitation. Think of it as an invitation for the clouds to shed their bounty. But like any power, it's not without its controversies. While the potential applications are impressive, ranging from drought prevention to reducing forest fire risks, the ethical and environmental implications are equally significant. We're talking about meddling with Mother Nature's own designs after all. This control over the elements, it sounds like a superpower, doesn't it? But what if it's more real than you think? Imagine being able to bring rain to a desert. Sounds impossible, right? Welcome to the world of cloud seeding. Cloud seeding, in its simplest form, is a method of weather modification. It's like your favorite superhero, only instead of fighting crime, it's manipulating weather. Developed in the mid-20th century, the concept is akin to planting a seed. But instead of a seed in the soil, we plant the seed in the cloud. So what exactly is this seed? Picture tiny particles like silver iodide or liquid propane. These particles are released into a cloud, acting as a nucleus around which water droplets can form. If you've ever seen a dust particle dancing in a sunbeam, imagine that dust particle as our seed. The water droplets latch onto it like friends at a party, growing larger and larger until they become too heavy to float around and fall as precipitation. Now, how do we get these particles into the cloud? It's not as if we can just throw them up there. Enter aircrafts and rockets. These seeds are packed into flares and launched into the sky or released from an aircraft flying through the cloud. Picture it like sending an invitation to the water droplets to start the party. But it's not always a party. The cloud needs to be ripe for seeding. It's like baking a cake. You can't just throw the ingredients into a bowl and expect a fluffy, moist cake. The cloud needs to have enough water vapor and the temperature has to be just right. And there's no guarantee that the rain will fall exactly where you want it. It's like throwing a handful of confetti in the air. You can't control where each piece will land. But despite these uncertainties, cloud seeding has been used to increase rainfall, reduce hail damage, and even clear fog. So, we have the ability to make it rain. But what are the implications of this power? Cloud seeding seems like a solution for drought-stricken areas, but it's not without its controversies. The potential benefits of cloud seeding are numerous and quite enticing. In regions plagued by chronic drought, cloud seeding could be a lifeline, a means to generate much-needed rainfall and replenish dwindling water supplies. Imagine turning a barren, parched landscape into a thriving, fertile oasis. It's a compelling vision, isn't it? Cloud seeding can also be used to combat wildfires by inducing rainfall in fire-prone areas. This could potentially save countless hectares of forest, protect wildlife, and even save human lives. In the face of an increasingly warming world, this technology could be a powerful weapon in our arsenal. However, like many tools, cloud seeding is not without its drawbacks and potential hazards. The first concern is that of altering weather patterns. When we seed a cloud to induce rainfall, we're essentially stealing moisture that would have fallen elsewhere. This could potentially disrupt weather systems on a regional scale, and the long-term effects of such disruptions are still largely unknown. Another potential problem lies in the risk of causing extreme weather events. While the goal is to generate moderate rainfall, there's always the chance that we could inadvertently trigger a torrential downpour, or worse, a destructive storm. This is not just speculation. There have been instances where cloud seeding operations have been linked to extreme weather events. And let's not forget the environmental implications. The chemicals used in cloud seeding, typically silver iodide or liquid propane, have been deemed safe in small amounts. But what about their cumulative impact? Could they pose a threat to our ecosystems over time? So we find ourselves at a crossroads. On one hand, we have a promising technology that could alleviate some of our most pressing environmental challenges. On the other, we face the possibility of unforeseen consequences of tampering too far with Mother Nature's intricate systems. As with any powerful tool, cloud seeding comes with great responsibility and potential consequences. In January 2020, Dubai made headlines with its unusual weather. The desert city was drenched in rain, but this was no ordinary downpour. 
This was a result of a cloud seeding operation, a deliberate effort to increase rainfall and combat the arid conditions that typically characterize the region. To understand the complexity of the situation, let's delve into the details. Dubai, known for its scorching heat and desert landscape, had for years been experimenting with cloud seeding as a way to boost its water supply. In this particular instance, the city had sent drones into the sky, releasing electrical charges into the clouds to stimulate rainfall. The results were far from what anyone had anticipated. The city was hit with an unprecedented amount of rainfall, roughly one-third of its annual rainfall in just one day. Streets were flooded, properties damaged, and the city's infrastructure was severely tested. The rainfall was so intense that it triggered a national emergency, with rescue teams deployed to help those affected. This was not the gentle rain they had hoped for, but a deluge. So what went wrong? It's a question that scientists and meteorologists have been grappling with. While cloud seeding can increase rainfall, the ability to control the amount of rain is still fairly limited. The science of weather is complex and unpredictable. Tiny changes can have huge effects, a concept known as the butterfly effect in chaos theory. In the case of Dubai, the cloud seeding operation interacted with a naturally occurring weather system exacerbating the rainfall. The unexpected downpour highlighted the potential dangers of weather manipulation and the need for careful oversight and control. The aftermath of this event was a wake-up call. The city had to deal with the immediate fallout, including damage to infrastructure and disruption to daily life. But it also sparked a larger conversation about the use of cloud seeding and the potential risks involved. Dubai's experience is a valuable case study for the rest of the world, showing both the potential and the pitfalls of weather manipulation. It's a clear example of how our attempts to control nature can sometimes have unintended consequences. The event also underscores the need for further research and understanding in the field of cloud seeding. While the technique holds promise, it's clear that we still have much to learn. The ability to manipulate the weather is a powerful tool, but like all tools, it needs to be used responsibly and with a deep understanding of the potential repercussions. This event in Dubai is a stark reminder of the power we wield when we attempt to manipulate the weather. As we continue to experiment with and refine these techniques, it's crucial that we proceed with caution, always mindful of the delicate balance of our natural world. Despite the potential risks, cloud seeding continues to be a promising solution for water scarcity. In the quest for water security, scientists and researchers are tirelessly working on improving and refining cloud seeding technology. The goal is to make it more effective, efficient and environmentally friendly. As we look to the future, the advancements in this field are nothing short of remarkable. Techniques are evolving from the traditional use of silver iodide to more innovative methods using liquid propane and frozen carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice. These new techniques aim to increase rainfall without causing adverse environmental impacts. Cloud seeding is not just limited to regions grappling with arid conditions. It's catching the attention of countries worldwide. China, for instance, has one of the most extensive cloud seeding programs in the world. They have invested heavily in this technology, using it for everything from easing droughts to ensuring clear skies for significant events. On the other hand, countries like the United States and Australia are also exploring cloud seeding's potential. They see it as a tool to replenish water resources, reduce forest fires, and even enhance snowfall for winter sports. But with the spread of this technology comes responsibility. As we gain the ability to manipulate weather patterns, we must consider the potential global impacts. Could widespread cloud seeding inadvertently alter weather patterns in other parts of the world? Could it lead to unforeseen climatic shifts or even spark conflicts over water resources? These are questions that scientists and policymakers are grappling with. As we move forward, it's crucial that rigorous scientific research guides the use of cloud seeding. We need robust regulatory frameworks to ensure that it's used responsibly and sustainably. As we continue to grapple with climate change and water scarcity, cloud seeding could be a game changer. But it's clear that we must tread carefully, for the power to control the weather is a formidable one.